Mani Karnika Tamba. The untold story of the feisty girl who became the Rani of Jhansi. Everyone had decided to do away with Farangi. Shine in the year 57, that sword was old. We heard the story in the mouth of the Bundel and Harbels, she was the queen of Jhansi who fought a lot. Introduction In 1828, Mani Karnika is born in the Ghats of Varanasi. She is raised by her father, Morapanth and Peshwa Bajirao II in Bidhor. She is a favorite of the Peshwa and he has brought her up with lot of love. One day Dixitji of Jhansi spots her facing a ferocious tiger fearlessly. There isn't a single person in India who does not know about the daring Rani Lakshmi Bai of Jhansi and her courageous exploits against the British. Such is her legacy that even today, two and a half centuries later, young girls in the country are given her example of fearlessness and gallantry while growing up. Childhood days of Rani Laxmi by Manu spent her childhood in the company of Nana Sahib, the son of Peshwa Baji Rao II. She had great courage and presence of mind which she proved once while saving Nana Sahib from getting crushed by the horse's feet. Interestingly, she shares her name with the Mani Karnaka Ghat, one of the oldest cremation ghats in Varanasi, but according to its Hindi definition, the meaning of her name is, Bejeweled Earring. An advisor in the court of Maratha Peshwas, Tamba was a close friend of Chimaji Appa Saheb, the younger brother of Baji Rao II, who had both moved to Varanasi after Rao had surrendered to the British. Following the demise of Chimaji few years later, the family then moved to the town of Bithar in Kanpur and stayed under the shelter of Rao. Lovingly known Manu, she grew up to be a lively and spirited young child, who was loved by one and all. In fact, such was her playfulness that she ended up earning the moniker of Chibili, by none other than Baji Rao himself who loved her profoundly. When Manu turned four, tragedy struck the family when her mother unexpectedly passed away. Tamba was left with the sole responsibility of raising the young girl, and he had very unconventional methods in this regard. Instead of growing up with girls of her age, Manu's playmates were the legendary duo of Nana Saheb and Tantia Tope. What was even more interesting was that although both the boys were many years older, that didn't stop her from tagging along with them in their many exploits. However, the account of how she was forsaken by her friend for being a girl, following which she vowed to develop a strong identity and never bow down to anyone, is a tale that is worth sharing time and again. Nana Saheb and Mani Karnika Tamba story It is so happened that one day Nana Saheb was riding on his elephant. When Manu saw him, she also wanted to ride and made several requests, to no avail. Whether he was teasing her or was being plain rude, no one knows, but his refusal to take Manu along was a scar that left a lasting impact on her. A teary-eyed Manu then declared to Nana that one day, she would have ten elephants to every one elephant of his. Another popular version of this anecdote, describes her running to her father and declaring the same. Because of the environment that she grew up, Manu was also educated and given warfare training alongside Nana and Tope, and she aced them proficiently. In fact, she was only seven when she came to the rescue of an 18-year-old Nana and saved his life. Nana had been waiting for Manu on his horseback, when the animal went out of control. 
Not only was she able to bring the horse under control, she even managed to pull Nana to safety before the horse could trample over him. Mani Karnika Tamba and Gangadhar Rao wedding When Manu turned 14, she was betrothed to Gangadhar Rao, the Raja of Jhansi, and after their wedding, she took the name that would go down in the annals of Indian history, Rani Lakshmi Bai. The rest, as we know, is history, for the valiant queen went on to become one of the iconic figures of Indian war for independence and chose martyrdom instead of surrendering to the British. Jhansi Ki Rani Lakshmi Bai and British. Lakshmi Bai, also spelled Lakshmi Bai, born circa November 19, 1835, Kashi, India, died June 17, 1858, Kodaki Sarai, near Gwalior, Rani, Queen, of Jhansi and a leader of the Indian Mutiny of 1857-58. Brought up in the household of the Peshwa ruler, Baji Rao II, Lakshmi Bai had an unusual upbringing for a Brahmin girl. Growing up with the boys in the Peshwa's court, she was trained in martial arts and became proficient in sword fighting and riding. She married the Maharaja of Jhansi, Gangadhar Rao, but was widowed without bearing a surviving heir to the throne. Following established Hindu tradition, just before his death the Maharaja adopted a boy as his heir. Lord Dalhousie, the British Governor General of India, refused to recognize the adopted heir and annexed Jhansi in accordance with the doctrine of lapse. An agent of the East India Company was posted in the small kingdom to look after administrative matters. Under General Hugh Rose, the East India Company's forces had begun their counteroffensive in Bundelkhand by January 1858. Advancing from Mo, Rose captured Sagar, now Sagar, in February and then turned toward Jhansi in March. The company's forces surrounded the fort of Jhansi, and a fierce battle raged. Offering stiff resistance to the invading forces, Lakshmi Bai did not surrender even after her troops were overwhelmed and the rescuing army of Tantia Tope, another rebel leader, was defeated at the Battle of Bedwa. Lakshmi Bai managed to escape from the fort with a small force of palace guards and headed eastward, where other rebels joined her. Tantia Tope and Lakshmi Bai then mounted a successful assault on the city fortress of Gwalior. The treasury and the arsenal were seized, and Nana Sahib, a prominent leader, was proclaimed as the Peshwa ruler. After taking Gwalior, Lakshmi Bai marched east to Morar to confront a British counterattack led by Rose. Dressed as a man, she fought a fierce battle and was killed in combat. Last fight with British forces British forces under the command of Sir Hugh Rose arrived at Jhansi Fort with the intention of capturing it in 1858. He demanded that the city surrender to him or else it would be destroyed. Rani Lakshmibai refused and proclaimed, We fight for independence. In the words of Lord Krishna, we will if we are victorious, enjoy the fruits of victory, if defeated and killed on the field of battle, we shall surely earn eternal glory and salvation. For two weeks the battle went on where the Rani led her army of men and women valiantly against the British. Despite courageous fighting, Jhansi lost the battle. Lakshmi Bai, along with her son Damodar Rao, escaped from Jhansi one night and reached Kalpi where she joined forces with Tatya Tope. Here, they occupied the town and prepared to defend it. The British attacked Kalpi on May 22, 1858 and Lakshmi Bai and Tatya Tope were defeated. The Rani, 
tying her infant son on her back, escaped to Kalpi on horseback. Along with Tatya Tope and other rebel soldiers, the Rani captured the fort of Gwalior. Afterwards, she proceeded to Morar, Gwalior to fight the British. Rani Lakshmibai died while fighting in Gwali Gwalior to fight the British. Rani Lakshmibai died while fighting in Gwalior on the 18th of June 1858, aged 23. She was dressed as a soldier when she died. Legacy Sir Hugh Rose has commented, remarkable for her beauty, cleverness and perseverance, she had been the most dangerous of all the rebel leaders. The best and bravest of all. Rani Lakshmibai became a symbol of resistance against British rule for later nationalists in India. She will always be remembered as a great martyr who laid down her life for the cause of freedom. She is a symbol of courage, heroism and woman power. Watch, like and subscribe.